Okay, students. So, for today's lesson, we will discuss Module 3, the Filipino National Artists, as well as their rules and contribution to contemporary arts. The Filipino National Artists' Rules and Contributions to Contemporary Arts the order of national artists is considered to be the highest national recognition for individuals who contributed to the development of Philippine arts. The National Commission for Culture and Arts and the Cultural Center of the Philippines together administer this award. The President of the Philippines grants this award to an artist after both institutions give recommendations for this particular artist. This began in 1972 when Presidential Proclamation Number 1001-1972 was enacted in order to recognize Filipinos who made exceptional contribution to Philippine arts and letters. Painter Fernando Amorsolo was awarded the same year, making him the first national artist. The Order of National Artists, also known as Orden ng Mga Pambansang Alagad ng Sining, was created by virtue of Presidential Proclamation Number 001, dated April 27, 1972, to give appropriate recognition and prestige to Filipinos who have distinguished themselves and made outstanding contribution to Philippine arts and letters. The first awarded was conferred later than that year on Fernando Amorzolo. So Fernando Amorzolo was one of the most important artists in the history of painting in the Philippines. Amorsolo was a portraitist and painter of rural Philippine landscapes. He is popularly known for his craftsmanship and mastery in the use of light. Fernando Amorsolo painted and sketched more than 10,000 pieces over his lifetime using natural and backlighting, backlighting techniques. His most known works are of Dalagang Filipina landscapes of his Filipino homeland, portraits, and the World War II war scenes. So the making of the Philippine flag by Fernando Amorsolo is the famous artist in the Philippines behind this painting. So the making of the Philippine flag is one of the most famous paintings in the Philippines, Philippines created by Fernando Amorsolo. Next, we have Antonio Buenaventura. So, he received a teacher's diploma in science and composition at the University of the Philippines. He pursued further studies at the Institute of International Education in New York, a music instructor and band conductor of the Philippine Military Academy, or the PMA. He restored the Philippine Constabulary Band in 1945, considered as one of the best military bands in the world. He founded the San Pablo Music Academy in Laguna, faculty member of the UP Conservatory of Music. He was declared as the National Artist for Music in 1988 and passed away in 1996. So, Buenaventura is highly acclaimed for his brilliance in the field of music. He took over the Philippine Constabulary and Philippine Army bands and transformed them into one of the finest military bands in the world. Colonel Buenaventura is also a distinguished composer and educator. Next, we have Hernani Cuenco. To this day, 
Cuenco's composition are popular and will love, especially the Ano Ko Ikaw Kamahal and Bato Sa Buhangin which he composed for films in honor of his wife. Aside from these signature pieces, Cuenco's other songs include Nahan Kahit Na Magtiis Niligin mo ng hamugang uhaw na lupa. Pilipinas, Inang Bayan, Isang Dalangin, and Kalesa. So, Ernani Cuenco was a Filipino composer, a film scorer, musical director, music teacher, and Philippine national artist for music. He completed a music degree and piano and cello from University of Santo Tomas, where he also taught for decades until his death in 1988. Next we have Francisco Feliciano. He was the musical director of the movie Ang Bukas Ay Atin and provided orchestration for a number of musical production including My Fair Lady and various Philippine productions. Feliciano composed more than 30 major works, including musical dramas, Sikhai sa Kabila ng Paalam, Asian Wings, and the monumental Three Act Opera, La Loba Negra, in 1984. So, Dr. Francisco Feliciano was one of the Philippines' most important composers. Feliciano's created more than 30 major works that include operas and music dramas, including that uh, La Loba Negra. Next, we have Jubita Fuentes. In 1925, Puentes made her debut as Sio Sio San in Puccini's Madame Butterfly at the Teatro Municipal di Piancenza. Another of her notable rules were of Mimi in Da Bohim, Pietro Mascagni's Eris and Richard Strauss, Salome. She later became an instructor upon her return. So, Jovita Fuentes is one of the greatest Filipino vocal talents in national artists for music. Was also the first Filipino international star in the world of opera. She also became a voice teacher herself from 1919 to 1924 at the University of the Philippines Conservatory of Music. Next we have Jose Maceda. His notable works include Pagsamba for 116 instruments, 100 mix and 25 male voices in 1968, cassette 100 for 100 cassette layers in 1971, Ugnayan for 20 radio stations in 1974, Lot Lot for several hundred to several thousand people in 1975, Suling Suling for 10 flutes and 10 bamboo bassers and 10 flat gongs in 1985. So Jose Maceda was a composer, pianist, and ethnomusicologist who dedicated his life to the understanding and popularization of Filipino traditional music. So how did Maceda create his work? So in his composition, Ugma Ugma, from 1963, Maceda would mix instruments from across Asia, placing their varying pitches and timbres alongside one another. Maceda mobilized the spirit of music concrete to transform these traditional harmonics into sonic masses. Initially active as a pianist, he appeared in France also, the Philippines and the USA from 1935 to 57, during which time he introduced many new works, 
mainly by French composer and pioneered a French style of piano playing in the Philippines. Next, we have Lucio San Pedro. So, he was born on February 11, 1913 in Angono, Rizal. Since his elementary days, he started composing. He studied the banjo, which inspired him to become a serious musician. He later pursued his music at the University of the Philippines and the Juilliard School in New York, USA. Lucio San Pedro is a master composer, conductor, and teacher whose music evokes the folk elements of the Filipino heritage. He was the conductor of much acclaimed Ping Kong Grand Mason Concert Band, the San Pedro Band of Angono, his father's former band, and the Banda Angono Numero Uno. He ardently advocated the creative, not literal use of the folk song, which he clawed in a polished style to evoke a subtle effect that articulates a strong sense of Filipino identity. Next, we have Levi Celerio. He is one of the Philippines' national artists in literature and music. Levi Celerio is, is a talented person. He is a composer, nurses, and he is one who made the famous song, Pasko na naman, including ang Pasko ay sumapit, kahit kunting pagtingin, ang pipit itik itik duwangin. Levi Celerio is a Filipino composer and lyricist born on April 30, 1910, in Tondo, Manila, Philippines. Famous for being lyricist, his song Treasures Life expressed nationalistic sentiments and complete grand philosophies. So, Levi Celerio was a Filipino composer and lyricist who is credited with writing over 4,000 songs. Celerio was recognized as the national artist of the Philippines for music and literature in 1997. Next, we have Lucretia Arcasilag. She is a composer and pianist. She is particularly known for incorporating indigenous Filipino instruments into orchestral productions. Casilag was instrumental in developing Philippine music and culture. She founded the Bayanihan Folk Arts Center for Research and Theatrical. So, Casilag was a Filipino composer and pianist. She is particularly known for incorporating indigenous Filipino instruments into orchestral productions. Next, we have Antonio J. Molina. Molina made his first composition in 1912 titled Matinal, which is preserved in an unpublished volume called Miniatoras. Volume 1.147. He was appointed to teach harmony, composition, music, history, and violin law at the UP Conservatory of Music, pursuing a career in music education until being appointed as dean. Antonio Jesus Molina was a Filipino compos composer, conductor, and music administrator. He was named a National Artist of the Philippines for his services to music. He was also known as Claude de Base of the Philippines due to his use of Impressionist themes in his music. Antonio Molina was a Spanish flamenco dancer also and popular singer and actor in films and on theatrical stage. Next, we have Ramon B. Santos. Santos' compositional style features chromaticism, 
music seria and electronic components combined with indigenous Philippine music elements. His works include Dingding, Na Diyawa, Da Nabasag na Banga, at iba't iba pang pinag-ugpong-ugpong na pananalita sa wika ng Pilipino para sa labing-anim na dinig. And Elbad, he had done ex- extensive research on the gameland music of Java as well as the traditional music of the Ibaloy, Maranao, Mansaka, Buntok, Yakan, and Buholano tribes in the Philippines. So Ramon Santos, composer, conductor, musicologist, is currently country's foremost exponent of contemporary Filipino music. He graduated in 1965 from the UP College of Music with a teacher's diploma and a Bachelor of Music degree in both composition and conducting. Next, we have Andrea Veneracion. Andrea Veneracion is a towering presence. Professor Veneracion elevated the Philippines' choral reputation throughout the decades of excellence with the choir she founded in 1963. The University of the Philippines Madrigal Singers the choir celebrates its 50th anniversary this uh, year with her perfect balance of choral technique and tuition and artistic sense. She lead the choir to top prizes in the most prestigious European choral competitions. Andrea Veneracion is highly esteemed for her achievements as choir master and choral arranger. Two of her indispensable contribution in culture and the arts include the founding of the Philippine Madrigal Singers and the spearheading of the development of Philippine choral music. Andrea Benaracion was a Filipino choral conductor and recipient of the 1999 National Artist for Music Award. So now, let's proceed to the Filipino national artists in the field of dance. So first, we have Francisca Reyes Aquino. Francisca Reyes Aquino is the legendary mother of the Philippine dancing, was born in Lunomboy, Bukawi in the Philippine province of Bulacan on March 9, 1899. She was the eldest of the three children of Felipe Reyes and Juliana. Francisca Reyes Aquino is considered as the mother of the Filipino folk dance for her research. In 1921, during the Manila Fiesta Carnival, he was a Filipino folk dancer and academic noted for her research on Filipino folk dance. She is a recipient of the Republic Award of Merit and the Ramon Magsaysay Award and is a designated national artist of the Philippines for dance. Next, we have Leonor Orosa Guquenco. In 1934, at the age of 17, she started her major dance experiments and in 1939 was the only dancer on the first cultural mission to Japan. That same year, she produced Circling the Globe and a year later, Dance Panorama. In 1940s, she created the Elements, the first ballet choreographed by a Filipino who commissioned music and sports featuring cheerleaders, a tennis match, and a basketball game. A year later, she choreographed the first Philippine folkloric ballet trend return to the native Leonor Orosa Guquenco was born on July 24 1917 in Hulu she was a Filipino national artist in creative dance her pen name was Cristina Luna and she was known as trailblazer mother of Filipino theater dance 
and Dean of Filipino Performing Arts Critics. Leonor Orosa Gucuento was a Filipino national artist in creative dance who was also known for breaking tradition within dance. She played the piano, drew art, designed scenery and costumes, sculpted, acted, directed, danced, and choreographed. Next, we have Ramon Obusan. Ramon Obusan was a Filipino dancer, choreographer, stage designer, and artistic director. Obusan is credited for his work in promoting Philippine traditional dance and cultural work. He is also an acclaimed archivist, researcher, and documentary filmmaker who focuses on Philippine culture. He also founded Ramon Busan Folk Loric Group in 1971. Busan died on December 21, 2006 due to cardiopulmonary arrest at the Makati Medical Center. Up to the time of his death, the annual Christmas program, Vamos e Belen at the Cultural Center of the Philippines, was at his oversight. Busan was also preparing for the cultural presentation to be made during the state dinner for the 2000 Asian Summit. Next, we have Alice Reyes. Alice Garcia Reyes was born on October 14, 1942, is a Filipina dancer, choreographer, teacher, director, and producer. The organizer of Ballet Philippines, she received last June 20, 2014 from President Aquino, the highest award in the arts, National Artists of the Philippines. She was chiefly responsible in popularizing contemporary dance as she organized Ballet Philippines and staged the first modern dance concert at the Cultural Center of the Philippines Main Theater on February 1970. She is best known for Bungo Sud Carmen, Carmina Burana, Romeo and Juliet, Ramahari Cinderella, all nouns with Filipino culture gesture and grace. So Alice Reyes is the visionary founder of Ballet Philippines as a dancer, choreographer, teacher, and director. Her work has helped establish dance as a professional career path in the country. Let's now proceed to the Filipino artists in the fields of theater. So we have Daisy Avilana. So Daisy Avilana was born on January 26, 1917 to May 12, 2013. Was a Filipino stage actress and theater director. Avilana was honored as National Artist of the Philippines for Theater and Film. In 1999, Avilana died on May 12, 2013 at the age of 96. So Avilana is best remembered for her portrayal of Candida Marasigan in the stage and film versions of Nick Joaquin's portrait of the artist as Filipino. Her directorial credits include Diego Silang in 1968 and Wa Walang Sugat in 1971. Among her screenplays were Sakai in 1939 and Portrait of the Artist as Filipino in 1955. Next, we have Honorata Atang Dilarama. Atang Dilarama was born on January 11, 1905 in Manila, Philippines as Honorata Dilarama. She was an actress known for the Lagang Buki in 1919, Oriental Blood in 1930, and Batong Buhay sa Central Luzon in 1950. She died on July 11, 1991 in the Philippines. As Queen of Sarsuela, she started in more than 50 Sarsuelas, started her career at the age of 7 after being cast in Spanish Sarsuelas such as Mascota. Sueño de Onvals and Marina. She started in several Viladas 
a literary musical program act in the very first Filipino Tagalog film, Dalagang Bukid, in 1919. So, Dilarama was the producer and the writer of plays such as Anak ni Eva and Bulaklak ng Kabundukan. For her achievements and contribution to the art form, she was hailed Queen of the Kundiman and of the Sarsuela in 1979. Next, we have Salvador F. Bernal. Bernal's career began in 1969. His output included over 300 productions in art, film, and music, and earned him the award of National Artist for Theater and Design in 2003. He earned a philosophy degree in 1966 from the Ateneo de Manila University, where he would later teach literature and stage design. The book Salvador F. Bernal, Designing the Stage by Nicanor G. Tiong Son is a comprehensive review of Bernal's work as designer for theater with over 200 full-color photographs of his sketches, models, and actual costumes and sets complementing the text. Next, we have Wilfredo Maria Guerrero. He was a Filipino playwright, director, teacher, and theater artist. Guerrero wrote well over 100 plays, 41 of which was been published. His unpublished plays have either been broadcast over the radio or staged in various parts of the Philippines. His plays can be found in various anthologies. 13 plays first published in 1947, 8 other plays in 1952, 7 more plays in 1962, 12 new plays in 1975, my favorite 11 plays in 1976, a latest plays in 1980, and Retribution, and 8 other selected plays in 1990. Next, we have Severino Montano. Severino Montano is considered as one of the titans of Philippine theater. He was a playwright, director, actor, and theater organizer with an output of one novel, 150 poems, and 50 plays in his 65-year lifetime. Through the foundation of the Arena Theater, Montano institutionalized legitimate theater in the Philippines. He also have a Lifetime Achievement Award as part of the National Artists of the Philippines. Academically, Montano started his tutelage under a British mentor, Marie Leslie Pressing, when he was 13. He studied at the University of the Philippines and she took Montano under her wing and endowed him with Western literature, the theater, and Shakespeare.